Hey everybody, welcome to the Gold Circle members area. This is where I serve Gold Circle members with premium content which addresses how to run your business more effectively. This video deals with business challenges. The last few years have been tough on business for most people. In the US, we've had troops fighting two foreign wars, an economic slump, and huge growth in the trade deficit with the rest of the world. Unemployment was still at 8.5% at the end of 2011. A high unemployment rate and the lingering effects of a damaged US economy are putting significant pressures on the ability of many Americans to uphold house, auto, and other essential payments. And with the foreclosure rate on the rise again, it is a difficult time for American homeowners in financial arrears. Europe has its own problems, and the lack of stability of the euro currency and the general malaise in Europe has reduced international demand for goods and services by about 1%. So what effect does all this have on our businesses, and what are the business challenges we are facing? The following challenges are facing businesses in general. Not every challenge is applicable to every business, but unfortunately you will recognize that many of these are in fact affecting your business daily. Firstly, state of the economy. Since recession hit in 2008, everyone has been hurting. Consumer spending has dropped alarmingly, industrial output is down, and practically every country in the world is running a trade deficit with the exception of China and India. Budget deficits are enormous. The United States federal budget for 2012 is projected to show a deficit of $1.1 trillion. Total public debt was $15.2 trillion on the 9th of January 2012. In many countries, housing markets have collapsed. It's going to take time for confidence to return to markets. So how can your business overcome this challenge? Not easily is a simple answer. Most likely, some harsh measures need to be taken to cut overhead until your business can recover. New markets need to be found for your products, both domestically and overseas. Then there's cash flow. Cash is king in a business. Businesses usually fail because they have no cash, not because of low profits. If you cannot collect receivables in a timely manner, you may not be able to pay your payables as they fall due. If it becomes a critical issue, you could consider offering discounts to customers for early payment of their invoices. Then there's delinquencies. In hard times, it gets much harder to get paid by customers. If your business can support it, you may give your customers more time to pay while working payment plans with them. Regular contact from your credit controller can squeeze payments out of delinquent customers. Regular credit checks on the customers can help you avoid giving credit to customers whose credit worthiness has slipped. Without adequate financing in place, delinquencies can quickly bankrupt a business. Then there's bad debts. Bad debts occur when delinquencies hit the wall and totally lose their ability to pay you. Good credit control procedures can sometimes help avoid bad debts. Then there's financing. Availability of bank financing has seriously declined since the recession hit in 2008. Since Lehman Brothers collapse, banks remain reluctant to lend to each other and consequently there's often a shortage of liquidity in the interbank market which translates into banks refusing business loans and overdrafts. A simple rule of thumb, look for credit facilities from a bank when you don't need it so that it's already in place should you come to need it later. We all suffer from inadequate sales levels. If sales levels cannot be maintained in domestic markets, you will need to look to new overseas markets for your products. This is not always easy, given the barriers that exist to doing business overseas with things like foreign languages, different currencies, and significantly different market conditions often existing. Then there's excessive overhead. The simple answer here is to cut the overhead. If you don't take action by making cuts to excessive overhead now, you may not have the luxury of this choice further down the road, when everyone may need to be put on short time or laid off. Then you have poor margins. If you have poor margins, you really only have a few choices. Try to get better terms from your suppliers, increase your margins, or cut costs. Finally, you could look to bundle products with added value accessories that boost your margins. If none of these options work, your business could be vulnerable. Then there's poor marketing. If this is the case, fire the marketing manager. However, not every business has the luxury of a marketing manager. You need to take a serious look at where you are spending your marketing dollars. You need to carry out an assessment of whether you're getting a positive return for your marketing budget. Change your marketing tactics one at a time to ascertain what works and what does not. Then there's underperforming managers. If you have underperforming managers, then the book stops with you. Your performance management system ought to be an early warning system for identifying subpar performance. 
Most businesses don't tolerate poor performance from managers for too long, and the most lenient businesses will have a three strikes and you're out policy. Then there's underperforming staff. This is very similar to underperforming managers. No business can afford to carry passengers. Poor performance may be entitled to a second chance, but a good performance management system can catch the early warning signs before the problem requires decisive action. Then there's intensity of competition. This is a difficult situation to combat. When competition in certain markets becomes intense, this drives prices down and it often becomes a race to the bottom. Nobody wins in this situation. You need to find a way to compete on some basis other than price. Then there's risk of supplier substitution. This can be become a problem for small and medium-sized businesses when large buyers decide to use their market power to demand better terms of business by buying nationally from one or two key suppliers rather than buying locally or regionally. This can squeeze traditional suppliers out of the game. The message here is not to place too much reliance on a small number of larger customers. Try to have a widely dispersed group of customers. Then there's risk of product substitution. If your product set is not unique, you will always risk a certain percentage of your customers choosing to buy from other suppliers from time to time. Try to be competitive with your price and or try and differentiate your business by delivering a superior customer service experience. Product quality. If your product quality lets you down, you must find a way to improve it. This may be through introducing improved quality controls in your manufacturing process or by sourcing finished products from another manufacturer or supplier. Many businesses can source high quality manufactured products in China for less than the cost of the raw materials in Western countries. And then, other things depend on the nature of the challenge. Try to be inventive in addressing all of your business challenges. If you always deal with challenges in the same way, you'll always get the same result. It's particularly important that challenges get addressed quickly and continuously until they're no longer a challenge or a threat to your business. Don't forget, other managers or employees involved in addressing challenges as they will bring fresh ideas to the table that may not have occurred to you. Overall, move quickly and get the best help available to you.